nestling beneath the North York Moors is the village of Thornton the Dale. And for over 30 years, it's been the home of the Mathewsons, a dynasty of dealers with a love of classics. They just have a personality, there's just something about them. In all shapes and sizes. Well, it is the best job ever, really, isn't it? A passion that can be turned into brass. They auction over 4,000 rare vehicles every year. Start me on it, we're gonna be with it. Most people will go to a sale with something in mind, but come away with something different. Something's either got it or it hasn't. It's what they fall in love with on that day. There's head of the family, Derek. What a runner. Smooth as silk, this car. Trusted lieutenants, son's Paul. Working with your family, it has its ups and its downs. God, blimey. And Dave. I bet you a pound it doesn't start. The fun is the chase. Blimey, Matthew, sons. You just don't know what's on the end of the phone, what you're going to find when you open them doors. Spot on. That's the find of the century. It's the real deal. Just never really two days exactly the same. This is a family's <laughs> love affair with motors that have lived a life. There's a story behind every car in this building. Testing, testing. Most people will buy a car because they can relate to it. Maybe a car that Dad had. We're selling dreams. Right, here we go. sale this week. 1982 Audi Quattro, a very rare car. Gonna make a heck of a thing this, isn't it? Oh, it's like I'm taking off in an aeroplane. <laughs> a Audi Quattro in kit form. <laughs> Sunbeam TI, look at this lovely bit of kit. I buy my cars because I like them, not to make money. And anybody that buys them to make money, it's for this classic cars. Good car, full stop, aren't they? User friendly, go down the shops in it, can't you? If it's set up right, yeah, if you like a bit of that sort of thing. Lot number 307, the Sunbeam Alpine. This looks like it's going to be a good project for someone. Not many years ago, five or six grand still bought you a very good Alpine. Not now, you have to give 14, 15 grand for that same car. Yeah, he's, he's a bit deaf. Hey? He's a bit deaf, it's the poor old lad. <laughs> OK, Joey. Put your back into it. Another day in North Yorkshire, and the hunt for classic cars is underway. It's got a value in it, it doesn't matter what it is, really. For Derek, finding buried treasure is what gets him out of bed. I suppose a true barn find is when you go somewhere deserted, derelict, and you open the door, and there's a car. Every collector's restorer's dream to open a shed and find something interesting there. Over the years, there's been plenty of discoveries. From Merck's... Wonderful. ..to Jags. Even in that condition, it's a heck of a find, isn't it? Mark one Mini Coopers. You never know what you're going to find, do you? Even the odd Fiesta XR2. Brilliant, look at that. But not all barn finds are found in barns. Sometimes, rare classics pop up in the unlikeliest of places. Just a few miles from Thornton and Dale, in the market town of Malton, a German motoring legend that changed driving forever is about to emerge from a suburban garage. Many, many years ago, my husband saw this advertised, so he went along to see the guy at the garage who we knew, and he, I suppose, tempted him, really, by saying, take it for the weekend. <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> he usually got the best. Pauline Deuce and her husband, Michael, traded in their golf for the Audi, and it didn't disappoint. I've always loved cars anywhere, or anything to do with speed. And I used to fly along to Moulton in it to come to work. Lots of comments went back home, you know, that I'd passed two or three cars along the road going to work. <laughs> Could hear the turbo kicking in when you put your foot down. Oh, like taking off in an aeroplane. <laughs>
The Quattro was a flying wedge that made it really cool to have a 4x4. Under the bonnet, a turbocharged engine that was equally at home on the tarmac or a forest track. There was aggressive styling and high-tech engineering. And for just over 14 grand, buyers could channel their inner Stig Blomqvist for a seat-of-the-pants ride to their local supermarket. The Quattro entered motoring folklore and defined the Audi brand. And survivors, in any condition, still highly sought after. Pauline's Quattro hasn't been fired up since 1995. It's a shame it's sitting here, you know. Unless I win the pools, I'm not going to be able to do anything with it and I'm getting older. <laughs> Didn't stop me wanting to drive it, though. Oof, it's a bit dark. <laughs> Crank, there's all sorts of rubbish in here. Mmm, still got that smell. It's a mixture between being fusty and petrol. <laughs> what would you like or what would you expect for the car? Uh, as much as possible, but realistically, you know, round about eight grand, I think, which is what it was valued at a long time ago. Vehicles arrive at Pickering from every corner of the UK. Thanks, guys. See you now. Some have come from just down the road. Yeah, go for it. Others have had a more complex journey. Arriving soon, two consignments from Northern Ireland. But head honcho Derek won't be there to greet them. He's a collection lined up near London. There's some nice stuff arriving today. I'm not going to be here. No, I'm going to be out on the road. David's out on the road. And so it should all work out all right, in theory. You say should? Well, these things have a bit of going pear shape, don't they? But I can't see really why it can go far wrong, to be honest. Oh, blimey. So that leaves Paul in charge. It's all down to uh, logistics and organisation. Oh, you what? Oh, you what? No. <laughs> no, we're still a little bit like a rabbit in a pair of headlights. As Paul's look would have it, both deliveries arrive at the same time. On the transporter, three classic sunbeams. A Talbot 90, an Alpine and a Mark III Rapier. Behind the camper, a rare 1981 Talbot Sunbeam TI. Brought by keen car collector James Aitchison. Commanded my collection about three, four years ago. And it's been sitting in the corner of my shed collecting dust. That was one of the ones that was on the pecking order for downsizing. But you might sell this and go back with another one. Possibly, I better not in case I want divorced. I would say that would probably happen very quickly. She's not original colour, so somebody has changed that. She looked like a Lotus at some stage, but she still has her 16 heart engine. Bought it for a reason, and I've had my fun. <laughs> and I might as well let somebody else have fun with it. I buy my cars because I like them, not to make money. And anybody that buys them to make money, it's for this classic cars. I know it's warm out here, no air conditioning in this one. Over on the transporter, driver Andrew McKelvey has a problem with his shipment of sunbeams. They're in good nick, but just two of them don't, um, two of them don't run. They're in good enough shape body-wise, and they're not the worst I've seen. Paul's having one of those days. These don't run? No, nope. I need them. I'll probably need a wee push with them. One, the one behind the cab, there's not the brakes aren't grit on it. Oh, it's so better. dangerous kind of a situation. It is, isn't it? It's a shame they don't run, but I don't know the story, so uh, I'm sure it won't take long to get them going. But for the meantime, we'll just push them about. I don't want to push it new unless we can't get her stopped. It's got nothing at all. I don't think so. A wee bit of a handbrake, I think. A wee bit of. She's centered, is she? Yeah, you're not bad at all. Yeah. Just watch the front wheels, yeah. yeah. That's three cars sorted. Just a hot hatch to go. Dave had one in his youth, 17, 18 or something, put some forest arches on and all the rest of it. Uh, and, uh, and I always thought, oh, a good-looking little car they are. Yeah, yeah. Good competition car. 
good car, full stop, aren't they? User friendly, go down the shops in it, can't you? If it's set up right and things. What, sideways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you like a bit of that sort of thing. Um, I've got yeah. some bread, I'm back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly right. No, I think they're a good little car, aren't they? It's just a shame that they rotted so much in it, you know, uh, else there would be more of them, wouldn't there? James is more of a mini man. This is why the Talbot has to go. She started off uh, the pineapple yellow colour and then she went to a green colour, as they do in the, the late 80s, early 90s, and then she went to Black Lotus and then she went to Inverness, Scotland, where she'd done... Right. I'd say Lane's rallies are done a wee bit of rallying, but nothing. There's no, right. there's no damage down below or anything. No, no. As the man says, it, we can't have everything. And something has to give. <laughs> well. So it's my collection. So in case you didn't get it, I think he said he likes minis. I only catch every third word. And, and he, he, he's on a trick now on a quest to find another one. <laughs> yes. Right. Was that about it in English? Basically, yes. Yeah, yeah. He only caught the third word of yours, so we're all right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And with an understanding between us, we make a fair team. Yeah. Dave's on the way to pick up a legendary motor, whose very name makes many folk go weak at the knees. Local one for us, just into Moulton, uh, to meet the lovely Pauline. She's got a Audi Quattro in the garage, uh, which has been in the family one way, shape or form for 20 years, maybe, from memory. The Quattro is shot to fame on the rally circuit in the hands of, well, I'll tell you, the one lady who, who, who really campaign the car, Michelle Mouton. She uh, burst onto the scene in a quattro and, um, yeah, really took the rally field by storm. Maybe her only man fancied having Michelle Mouton as a girlfriend, I think. Yeah, there she was, a lovely lady, very attractive lady, and, uh, and bloody hell, could she drive? Yeah, she could drive. I love a car in its day. But Pauline's Audi isn't quite rally ready. Right, a Audi quattro in kit form. <laughs> <laughs> We've got four flat tyres, so uh, if we can get some wind in, then great. It'll just make it a bit easier, dragging it out. See how we go. We're going to need a bit of electric down here then, so if I chuck that over the fence, will you plug that in your house? Hopefully we're going to have some left. Christ, that's going quick, isn't it? Is she plugging it in next doors? There were plans, I think, at one stage to bring it back to former glory, so... When a better door was found, great, i.e. gold door, when a better wing was found, i.e. blue wing, a better bonnet, and so on and so forth, red bonnet, so there's better panels been added. Wings would be tricky, I would think. Audi coupe wings would be OK, but not, not Quattro wings with flares. So obviously a normal wing was flat. Quattro wing is a spoiler now, so it's got to be painted anyway, so it might as well stay as it is. Right, we'll get the old compressor fired up and see if those tyres take some uh, wind. Just enough to get them to roll. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hmm. We'll see if those wheels turn. Now, this is the bit where I think I should have brought a hammer and a bit of wood and some oil, yeah. Let me move out of your way. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. He hasn't got it lined up properly, has he? That, are those wheels going to go on there? <laughs> You need to go right a bit. <laughs> you tell him, Paulie. <laughs> so... Ooh, there she comes, slowly, slowly. Yeah, we're just going to catch it on that side, I think. That garage was made to measure, wasn't it, for that car? Serves me right for putting new clothes on on a Friday, doesn't it, really? She's on. Might get rid of some junk now. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've got to ask you, what colour is it? The back is the colour. I'm surprised you didn't keep the number with that being your age now, Pauline. I oh, wish. On that number. Bloody yeah. hell. But I'd anyhow. do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I was 48, it wouldn't be going. I'd be hoping to meet a rich man that could do it up for me. Well, Dave's <laughs> around, so... Uh... <laughs> I think it'd be a hell of a project for someone, wouldn't it? Yeah. When I mean, he wants a fair bit of TLC, of course it does. But it's not going to be mega money. You know, it's going to be affordable, I think. Paulie's obviously had interest in it over the years from different people. And sometimes those people do pay what something's worth. But I'll have to talk from experience, and experience tells me in many cases they don't. They think they can, they can get it for nothing, you know. 
So I think she does exactly the right thing, I genuinely do. Because um, if there's one sure way of being sure that a car achieves its true value, it's at public auction, isn't it? The public dictate its value, don't they? You got your garage back. It's decided the Audi could fetch around seven grand. Exactly what Pauline paid for it in 1988. Yeah, I would like to have driven it again. That was always my wish, was to drive it again. But there you go. We have to move on, yeah. I'm not going to do it, you know. Somebody else can enjoy it. Yeah. The Pickering showroom is creaking at the seams. To be fair, this has got the makings of a nice old car, hasn't it? No, it's a dog. Cars from across the UK that have come to Yorkshire to be sold. And Derek's got his eye on a trio of sunbeams from across the water. Three cars came in from um, the Emerald Isle from Ireland, which is an Alpine, Rapier and the uh, Talbot 90. And, um, and he's got stuck into all three, but not finished either or any. Uh, so that's typical. That's classic men right down to the last blooming drop of, drop of blood. The, the Talbot 90, whilst they're a really highly rated motor, I rate them. Fast car, good car, powerful engine, 2.2s, and we all rate them, but they don't make a great deal of money, and I, I don't know quite why, but the Alpines uh, have notoriously been underrated forever. Um, even in the 60s, they just didn't quite hit the spot. They were regarded as airdressers cars, that's what they were. Um, a bit like Spitfires were in, in, in the 70s, it was they were a girly car. But I actually bucked the trend, not being an airdresser, uh, or a girly, I don't think. I actually liked them. Um, but the reason I liked them is because they were cheap. But the rapier is right on point. This is their flagship. It's a two-door, pillarless car, as you can see. Lovely design, really nice. Now, these were always popular in their day. There's no question about it. So I can see this doing four or five grand and, and someone having a right good buy with it. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is the best value car at the sale on Saturday. Would never surprise me. So, good news, I think, on all these on all these three cars. Good news. I think they'll do well. Most cars that come to auction have already had their faces washed. Others require their Sunday best. Most of it will polish up. And for those not yet showroom ready. Matthewson's crack father and son cleaning team, Paul and Charlie, are on the case. Where's this from then, Dad? Uh, your granddad picked it up from over Pateley Bridge area. All right. Uh, it's obviously been stood for some time. This was obviously on the guy's to-do list, wasn't it? To get it um, tonsed up and put back on the road and stuff. Yeah. It'll make a good little car, won't it? When it's done. In this family empire, every day is an education. A little bit like Charlie there, we, um, I think both of us lads, we were always messing around with father. You know, we're around the garage a fair bit, just like Charlie is now. And yeah, you just grow up with it, don't you? It becomes life, really. It's a bit like a farmer, isn't it? You know, you, you wake up on a morning, you're at work, aren't you? And as you come on, you learn the trade. It's got flip out indicators as well. It's a good thing. And it's just a natural progression, really. I mean, Dad's never really sent a car out to get a wheel bearing done or whatever, he's kind of done it himself. And because I'm like his shadow, I'm always there with him. So I've always been watching and learning and, you know, so. Uh, he, yeah, he should really be paying us for being here, for, uh, for all the learning and the education that we're giving him uh, and the life skills and experience and, for oh, the list is endless, isn't it, you know? So uh, he should really stand behind you shaking his head. So he should really be paying us, not the other so way I around. I pay you for me to work for you? Yes, yeah, yeah. But in, in exchange, you give me knowledge? That's right, priceless. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan. It's online auction time. Once the tech team gets it sorted. And the Irish Sunbeam Trio have a chance to shine. Where does that put into? First up, the 1956 Talbot 90. 
This looks very sensibly priced. We all know what these fetch when they're in nice order. Probably about three times this price. So we're asking 2,000. 2,000, not a lot of points starting much lower than 2,000. Is there surely for a Sunbeam Tolbert? We'll drop it a little bit, we'll then get things moving then. We'll drop it at 19. Surely someone wants a little project, but if not, we'll have to move on. No interest on the day, but it's picked up by a Talbot enthusiast post-auction for 2,600. Next, the 66 Alpine. The Sunbeam Alpine. This looks like it's going to be a good project for someone. So where should we start? Three and a half, four, four and a half here with me, Will. Five there with you, Jordan. Five, two, fifty, five, five. Five, seven, fifty. Provisional, Jordan. Five, ah, six thousand pounds. It's on six one. Yeah, okay. It's going to go six thousand one hundred. Sold to a bargain buyer in sunny Swansea. And finally, Derek's favourite. Nineteen sixty Sunbeam Rapier. It's a nice car. Not a great deal of work to be done to it. You can't find these here. Uh, these here rapiers very easy. You know they're expensive, but this is your chance to buy a cheap one. Start me on it. Where? Three, three thousand, three two, three four, three six. Cheapest rapier in the country. I would have said three thousand six hundred. Is there eight anywhere? Three thousand six hundred. Three eight. Three eight. Three thousand eight hundred. Go in then. Three thousand eight hundred. Looking for four. Can I say four thousand? Worth every penny. You cannot find rapiers at this sort of money. Bit of weekend work finishing it off. Here's the four. Be quick. It's selling. Last chance. Three thousand eight. Three thousand eight hundred. Fear not. I've got it. Rapiers sell well, and this one goes to the trade. And with most of the Northern Irish cars now gone, Paul can put his trotters up. I think, um, I think it just it, all of a sudden catches up with you, doesn't it? And if you were going to have a lay down in the garage, where, where, where would you? <laughs> Who'd have thought I might have been lent on a little teardrop at that point? Hey, yeah, yeah. To be fair, you could actually. Oh, it's gone down. The airbed has deflated. <laughs> you got any puff in you? In Pickering, a showroom of gleaming cars all ready for their moment in the sun. One day you'll find an old English car without an oil leak. <laughs> but this isn't it. <laughs> and there's a lot of interest in the battered quattro that's emerged from its time warp lockup. An original right-hand drive quattro is a rare thing, but there are dressed-up copies out there that aren't the real deal. Dave's called in a quattro specialist to do some forensic analysis on the car. It needs to be genuine to be worth someone's money. Oh, it smells like a quattro. <laughs> Phil Jameson. Audi Quattro Owners Club historian. Well, the bonnet is a non-standard colour. Is that right? Yeah. Is it? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they did a... Gian red. Um, same bonnet to look at? Same bonnet to look at. Yeah. Um, some Quattros had it, but it was slightly different to that. Right, um, OK. Yeah, um, yeah. Wing Alpine white. Uh, door. Mm. It's hard to tell in this light. It's either diamond silver, which I would say it is, which is an early colour, I, it will be Zermatt silver. And the car, what it should be, is Helios blue. Helios blue, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. The panels are a bit misleading, because you see it and it looks like a patchwork quilt, but it's not crazy with rust. I've seen 30, 40, 50 cars in the past that have been a lot worse. It's very acceptable, considering it's not been run for sort of 20 something years, 25 years, and it will make a good project for someone. So, I've, um, I've just seen something really strange as well. Oh, go on. You know, we said it's um, diamond silver door. Yeah. Obviously. Oh, with a Helios blue inside. It's Helios blue, eh? That's weird, isn't it? When you said I've just seen that, I thought well, the only thing you could have seen is that shark. But look at that. That's strange, that, isn't it? Yeah. Wonder why the hell they've done that? Because the top half's silver, look. That is crazy. Well, work that one out. Pedigree matters. Fully restored quattros can fetch upwards of 40 grand. Even a project like this one should command a high price. They were always quite rare. They didn't make a lot of them. There was 2,700 and something came to the UK, you know, over 11 years, that, that's nothing. That is an original exhaust. 
To the purist, the more original the car, it's worth more. If there was a factory rear tender I want and one that had been converted, if I was looking at the one that had been converted, I want to convert that back to a left-hand drive because that's how it should be. It's worth less being converted to a right-hand drive. It's all about being as Audi intended. Nothing added, nothing taken away. You shouldn't have them rings on. Is that right? Yeah. Badging-wise, yeah. on, on, on 1980 to 1984, stick on badging uh, and no rings. Right. Fortunately, those clever Germans left their own clues and an astonishing amount of detail to those in the know. This is this has not been on for a while. On a plate in the boot. Oh, it's up there. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. Well, you learn something every day. I'd either been looking underneath the carpets. Yep. Do you want a picture of it? Yeah. Oh, good man. What information would that hold there then? It's got the chassis number on. Yeah. A build code on it. Right. So you yeah. can use that to do a bit I more. I can work out off that right. what day it was actually manufactured right. and built. Right. It's got the code on it for the colour. Yeah. And it's got other little codes on that will tell you it had uh, optional extras on it, oh, etc. Right, okay. So I know off that it was built on a Saturday, which is quite rare. Based on the information, so I'm saying this is chassis, quite a high one. So it's 1354, so it's got to be mid to end of July. So this tells me that it was actually built on Saturday the 24th of July, 1982. So it is what we expect, and that all confirms, again, that it is one of the factory right-hand drives. Can you tell me the time as well? The what? The time. <laughs> Pauline's Audi is exactly what it should be. That, that's a, a good yardstick to yeah. show you what... And the it. price at auction will reflect that. Sh should we just write on the bonnet in the dust, your guess and my guess? <laughs> yeah, OK. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, that. Yeah. OK, right, I reckon here. Yeah. Just about make it there. 12,450, 14,800. <laughs> there you go. An expert and someone that doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Which one and are you, you going to go for? You'll probably be closer <laughs> than me. Across at Thornton the Dale, another delivery. Right on. Coal scuttle front, they call it. And the engine's arse about face, you see. This 1928 Renault KZ van, bought by Derek as a display vehicle for the office. Uh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely lovely. He's picked it up from a contact in North Wales and discovered that it's très historique. The history that he's found out, the previous owner, was that apparently it was a bread van around Paris uh, from you. And then, of course, it got lost somewhere or whatever, I don't know. It probably got hidden during the war because, let's face it, Hitler would have cleaned it up. You know, he'd have either snaffled it up or blown it up, one or the other. Um, so we're, we're, we're very lucky to get it. There we are. There are, look at that. Lovely. Isn't that nice? Get this cleaned up. They can polish all this up, make it look nice. And, um, and they can display all their stuff and bits and pieces. The beauty of commercials, they have really genuinely got a previous life. You know, we say that about cars. They've lived the life, and now they're going to start another one and that, which is true. But commercials have really lived the life. Very, very nice cab. She'll clean up lovely. The girls will get in there. I'll, I'll leave it to them. It'd be a nice little project for them, really, you see. I'm pleased that they've taken to, to this sort of vehicle. Oh, look at that beauty. Because it gives them a, a nice interest and, 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 and a feeling of, of uh, participation. So this is the new works outing van. Look at that. Shuts like a golf. The staff. Full of good yeah. ideas. It's got a lot of baskets to go in it. Yeah. Okay. Look at the optics for that. Make a lovely gym van. <laughs> yeah. Nice fairy lights. Yeah, I've, got, I've, got, I've got some pumps. Like a lunchtime. <laughs> Do you know what you need on the front? You know, like you used to get them signs where it used to say Sandra and, I don't know, Boris. You need one that says, like, Degsy across the windscreen. Degsy and Sue. Yeah. She's got that look of a sort of a French model, hasn't she? She's sitting in that car. Carry armpits. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> but not so much a more from Jack. Charming little thing. Do you not think? No, not really. No? It's so bleeding. Yeah, I thought you'd like it. 
I don't not like it. It's just ugly, isn't it? Do you like it? They're beautiful in their ugliness. I think it's just so well made. Ever so spacious. I mean, a big van, isn't it? It's in nice condition. A lovely dashboard. I'll clean that up later on. Simple, straightforward layout. Obviously, clutch in the middle, brake. Conventional, conventional, should we say. Throttle on the right. Dyna start, uh, choke over this side. The steering wheel is, it, again, it's a work of art. It's absolutely beautifully made. Cast alloy with this, this wood cover. And the, the, the grips just feel oh, just so original and so genuine and strong. You know, look at the spokes and right hand drive. Now, again, a lot of people I don't think realize that the, the French drove um, on, on our side of the road until I think in 1930-ish. So all their cars, the Renaults and the rest of it and that were right hand drive up until that period. Even the ironmongery has Derek salivating. But even down, down to the brackets in the cab, look. Look how beautifully made. I mean, that, that, that takes a bit of thinking about that bracket, look. A bloke ain't just thought one afternoon and thought, oh, I'll just knock up a bracket and put it on there, because he basically he put, just put an L-shaped bracket on like that. But he's, he's had the gumption to bring it down. Look at that. I mean, it's lovely. Absolutely lovely. And dry. Another nice, strong bracket on there. They're bracket mad, aren't they? In the yard, the multicolored quattro is getting noticed. Bit of rust here and there, bit of rot on the bulkhead, which is not uncommon with them. Not for me, no. Too, too big a job, I think, and, and, and too much work involved in sourcing whatever else it needs. Looking for something for a quick fix, really. Nineteen eighty-two Audi Quattro, a very rare car. We have 12 phone bidders on the phone. 12. Just in time, mate, so I've got you down for lot 12. 12. Yeah, we're okay to go. Yeah. We're okay to go, are yeah. you sure? Yep, yeah. yeah, we're okay to go, Don't yeah. Don't want to be losing anyone, are you sure? Yep. Now, off we go then. Bids on the book, 10,000 pound, with me. 10,000. 10, 10, 10, 10, 5, 10, 5. 10, 5, and selling on the right. Internet's out, Still I'm 10, out. 10,000 5. 10, 5. Are you all done? 10,500, what a car. Going to make a heck of a thing this, isn't it? Is there 11 anywhere? Still 11. 10,005. Claire's phone. Yeah, it's 10,005 on it's sale and still. going. 10,005. 10, 10,005 for the first. 105 for the second. Claire's phone. 10,005 on sale and going. 10 for 11. Internet. Hey, no 11,000 pounds. Bid on the okay, internet. 11,005. All, 11, all the best now. Bye-bye. 11,005. -bye. Internet's out now. Selling on my right. Be sharp, 11,500 for the first, 11,500 for the second, third and last time, 11,500, 11,500, clear. me. made a lot of money, didn't it? Are they all flat? Yeah, but, oh yeah. Yeah, they are, Ren. The Audi goes for 4,500 more than owner Pauline was expecting. And a few weeks later, it's on the move. Just. Up. New owner Michael Clues seeing it for the first time. Before I knew where I was, I was I was bidding and I'd never bid on a car ever in my life before. It was just a, a one-off moment of madness or I don't know, fulfilling a dream, I suppose. What have I bought? I don't know. I uh, a couple of gin and tonics and a, a, a happy trigger finger and I've ended up with this, which is might be a bit more than I can chew. Yes, a picture doesn't tell a thousand words, does it? It looked better in the pictures, but I still love it in the flesh. So I just need to... Looking at it, two years, I reckon, doing it myself. In the showroom, a good, honest motor always gets attention, regardless of price. It just looks nice to me, it's got character. With restrictions in place, there are no crowds, but the sales continue. And it's the day of reckoning for the remaining Talbot Sunbeam from Northern Ireland. Look at this, the 81 Sunbeam TI, lovely bit of kit. Start me on it. 
I've got some bids. Seven, five, eight, five, eight thousand five hundred. The TI. I'll take seven fifty if it helps you. Eight thousand five. Screen's gone off. It's back on. Eight thousand five hundred. Eight seven fifty. Eight seven fifty. Upstairs. We'll talk. We'll try then. Eight thousand seven hundred and fifty. Upstairs. Be warned. Internet's out. Provisional only. Eight seven fifty. We'll try. Thank you for your bids. At just £250 below reserve, a deal is done. But this motor isn't going far. We're going to run it down to a neighbour of mine who's bought it, really, reminiscing. Had one in, in his youth and um, regret selling it. Been keeping an eye out for one at some point. And um, I was talking to him a week or two back and uh, he actually brought some photographs out. He said, here, oh, look, this is what I used to have. And there's a photograph, and I says, oh, we've got one of them just come in. Uh, and uh, next thing you know, he's in the car, he's down here, uh, and, uh, and he's bought it. <laughs> so he'll be all excited, won't he, later? Keep going. One more. Full-on car restoration isn't for the faint-hearted. Thank you. Perfect. It's been designed to put together and take apart. Versprung Dirk Technique. I think it stands for easy to take apart by an amateur Muppet. And the new Quattro owner, Michael Clues, and his son George are in the thick of it. So now we know it's secure. Oh, perfect, thank you. This should come off, George. Oof. OK, let's tease it off. In their garage in Leicestershire, they've started the mammoth task of breathing new life into a truly iconic motor that hasn't run for more than two decades. Considering I broke the golden rule and bought it without seeing it, which was daft, brave, foolhardy, I don't know. But I've not been disappointed. I haven't got it here and thought, oh, no, this is just a money pit. Because I think even for somebody as simple as myself, it's all doable. It's not, I'm not a mechanic, but it's all doable. It's, 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 it's going to be great. It's, it's going to be great when it's done. Some bodywork needs replacing, and the sunroof will be taken out and sealed up. Michael's keen to keep the Audi as authentic as possible. You only get it once, don't you? That's it, so once that's gone, you can make something look that pristine, but if it ends up like Trigger's broom, it's had ten handles and four bottoms, it's not the original, is it? So it's got to be kept to original as much as I can keep it original. So I would rather pay more for a second-hand original part than put in a new part. And George is in full agreement. They look nice. Not nicer than cars these days, really. Well, I mean, it's an expensive car from the day, but so nostalgia for it. I can still sort of connect with my dad's nostalgia for it. It's one of those cars that you were never going to have. You were never going to have the money to have one. You were never going to be the kind of person that would buy a performance-leading four-wheel drive rally car ever and then all of a sudden you find yourself in the very fortunate position of being able to to do that so it's it's get one while you can i'm expecting it to be tires refurbishing the alloys paint work that's if you can do the body work yourself which you can do hopefully the mechanics if there's not too much wrong with it shouldn't be too much you're into disc and pads and the usual consumables really it's how far we go with it so if we don't unearth anything in the engine that's major I think we've got a, a, a cracking car. In the meantime, Michael's dreaming of the day he's able to fire up his very own Quattro. People tell me a five-cylinder sounds fantastic, so hopefully when it does start, I won't be disappointed. It's... she's solid. It's all right. How do you imagine in your mind it will drive? Um, like I'm... Um, in the 80s, in ashes to ashes, it's going to scoot round corners, it's going to grip, it's going to hold the road superbly well. I'll feel like I'm going faster than I am. I shall grin when I drive it. Or at the Quattro, yeah, I'll be able to say that. They're just a great car. Not far from Thornton Dale, another father and son team are waiting for their new project to arrive. Yeah. For a couple of years, 
James has been restoring a Mini Cooper, with the help of his dad, Andrew. The, the finished effect is spot on. It looks really good. But his old man has always hankered after the car of his youth. Nostalgia for me. Bought the Sunbeam because uh, I owned one over 30 years ago. <laughs> uh, they're fantastic cars, great fun, rear wheel drive. James and I have talked about getting an Avenger Tiger or a Sunbeam for a long time. The rest is history, as they say. Yeah, we had a little bid. Hey, have you made space? Have we made space? Yeah. Of course we have. <laughs> have you been polishing, James? Uh, no, we're making space. <laughs> We think it looks exactly like the one I had about 32 years ago. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same colour, same wheels, everything. Lovely. Really, really nice. Looks nicer li than looking at a photograph. <laughs> We're living our dream at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Look at that. Lovely. Perfect. Well, it's home, isn't it, really? It is. It's where it needs to be. <laughs> where it needs to be. I love it. It's nice that he had one when he was 18, 19, and as a 19-year-old, I'm sure I'm feeling the same as he was 30 years ago when he had his one. But yeah, I think it's great. <laughs> Got to get some original seats for it. Still front wings, the rest, really. It just needs a change of oil, a tune-up, and it's good to go. Best bit, really, isn't it? You know, sometimes you drop things off and you just know full well that it's the wrong car for that person or the wrong person for that car. And then on the flip side, you know, you take things to people that are going to appreciate them and look after them and, uh, and, uh, and actually cherish it, you know, which I think is the case here. It's good. It's certainly comfortable. Yeah, there's two there, yeah, that, uh, that are over the moon, you know. I don't suppose you can make them a lot happier today, you know. That's it, innit? You know, they're going to stand there, aren't they, for the, for the next hour, looking at it, looking round it, uh, and um, falling in love with it with a bit of luck. Families and the love of cars. Sounds familiar. <laughs> we have a family concern, don't we? I think that's great, you know. And Andy there is, um, is helping James along, isn't he? And I'm sure at times James is helping Andy along. You know, it, it, uh, it goes both ways, doesn't it? Let's be fair. So, uh, yeah, I think it's brilliant, yeah. Thank you very much. You don't see them. They're so rare, you just... I, I can't remember the last time I saw one for sale. Not an original one like that. The hammer price was 9250 I think that was about right. That was where I wanted to be. It was a good price. I'm happy. It needs a few things, but what old cars don't. A learning curve, yeah. The plan with the car is just to drive it and take it to shows and enjoy it. I've got no interest in sprinting it or racing it. James's time will come as he gets a little bit older and can afford the insurance, then it's his. We, you know, we bought it 50-50 and I'll have the first bit of fun and he can take over. Driving it, I think, is going to be a big step up from a Mini, I think. But, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun having something that uh, goes a bit more when you put your foot down a bit. 